Welcome back, everybody. Uh, it's our grand return. It's uh, the Middle Mac Movie Podcast. I am Nathan Middlebrooks. And I'm Seth McCreary. And today we're talking about a lovely little movie called Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, a.k.a. Michael Sarah looks like a dork for an hour and 50 minutes and proceeds to beat the crap out of everyone. <clears throat> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So what's our sponsor today, Seth? Well, I'm glad you asked. Today our sponsor is self-respect. You feel down in the dumps? You feel like your life's going nowhere? Yes. You feel like you just can't hold on to anything that really matters? All the time. Well, then shut up about it and get some self-respect. <laughs> okay, now, Nathan, on to the movie. <clears throat> Heck yeah. So this movie, I've, I've been wanting to watch it for a while. I've read the first volume of the comic, which I've got here. I'll do a little bit of book-turning ASMR for you guys. That was the book turning. But I never read the, the next two, mainly because when I went to Barn and, Barnes and & Noble, they uh, didn't have the next volume there. So, But we watched the movie. It's very condensed in the terms of it had to shorten up a lot of stuff from the comics. As every book to movie does. Mm -hmm. It seems pretty faithful to me. Like it, it holds a lot of the essence from the comics. A lot of like the dorkiness and like snappy humor, which I really love. Yeah. And another thing, for those who haven't read the comic book for this, the thing that this movie does right, I feel, is it's a fun movie. Mm -hmm. There's not many points, I don't think there was ever a point where I felt like it was dragging on. No. It's a very quick movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, spoilers for a movie that came out in 2010, by the way. Or if you're wanting to read the comic, then... Also spoilers. Did. Spoilers, but although, like I said, I only read the first issue. But anyways... Here we are, we're talking about this, and uh, I gotta say one thing that I liked a lot about this is that all the characters each had their own, like, charm or charisma to them, in, like, their own way, which is not common with movies, like, nowadays, and I watched it, and there was a part of me that liked every character, no matter how, like, minor they okay. were. Each one <clears throat> stood out to me. I feel like, yeah, there was, like, no bad performance in this movie. No. I think they all acted really well in their parts. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it was just a really fun movie. It just, I mean, this would be fun for anybody, I feel like. You don't even really have to be a Scott Pilgrim fan. Yeah, you could literally just pick this up and watch and be like, <clears throat> oh, yeah, that was fun. Yeah. It's very, like, arcade -y. Mm -hmm. We should say that at least, I guess. Like a lot of it is like towards arcade like games. Mm -hmm. A lot of the aspects in it are, <clears throat> and a lot of a lot of the uh, the fun of this movie, I think, comes from the director Edgar Wright. Yes, he, he is a he's just a very fun guy. He understands how film works. If you haven't watched any of his other stuff, um, I recommend uh, Hot Fuzz because I think that's literally like my favorite comedy <laughs> of all time. But now this movie is it's pretty far up there for me, I'd say. Because honestly, he just understands how to work with the source material like this. Like the whole pacing of this movie and how it works is just like it moves like that. Like a lot of other movies we've talked about. It, it just goes fast. But it's not in a way that's like exhausting. Yeah. It's in a way that's funny. Yes, <clears throat> like I really do like the editing in this movie. Uh -huh. Like it could have been like every other movie and just went to black or something uh -huh. like that. Did a narration, you know. Mm -hmm. But I really did like that. It just like cut like this, mm -hmm. you know. And I love how he would like stitch like two shots together. Like one person would be in the shot, but then it'd, like cut to a different place as they were still talking. Yeah, like just the transition. Yeah. It was really interesting, and also, like, I don't know, just the setting of it being in Toronto is actually cool. And another thing me and Nate talked about while watching the movie, the choreography in this movie is, like, excellent. Sur surprisingly great, yeah. Yeah, you can actually see what's happening during yeah. the fights. Oh, granted, yeah, we'll talk about why they're fighting later. But, yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome, because, like, you know, I was kind of expecting, like, kind of, like, just goofy CG fighting throughout most of it and a lot of it is goofy but like it actually looked choreographed like if you watch like i'd say it's got more choreography than most like mcu movies well yeah now. in the mcu usually it's like swing your hammer uh -huh. throw a punch. the only exception i can really think of is like the fight with thanos and uh what is it winter soldier 
Yeah. Yeah. A lot of Winter Soldier spots were like choreographed pretty. Oh, they were really well done. Yeah, because it's like they're normal people. Uh huh. They're not like super powered, but we're not here to talk about the no. MCU. But I'm just saying it's kind of it's kind of funny from a movie from 2010. That's not even an action movie. Yeah, it's not real. I wouldn't even say it's an action movie. It's a comedy with action in it. Mm-hmm. That it trumps like actual action movies choreography. It's like you said. Well, I don't know if I should say it. What? Nathan said something about the Bourne movies while watching it. So. Okay, I think it was in Bourne. I like the Bourne movies, but I think it was Bourne Ultimatum. Like, there's one scene where it's just like, cut, 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 Is that cut, the cut. One? Yeah, I think it was the bathroom one. But just like movies, they need to. If you're having an action movie, you need to show what's going on. That's the great thing about choreography. If you're doing all this choreography and having cut every second, one that's disorienting. And two, that takes away a lot from the actual effort that went into making these movies. I guess I can kind of get why some movies do it, though. Because a lot of time when they cut, it's so, like, the stunt actors can go in there and do things so you don't see their faces or whatever. Yeah. You know, but, like, like we were talking about earlier with, like, the, when Captain America, Thor, and Iron Man were fighting Mm -hmm. Thanos, it was like a one-shot, pretty much, at the beginning. Yeah. And, like, it didn't cut at all, and it just kind of zoomed out, I think. And uh, I, was, I was thinking of the one where they fought him uh, but that with fight Doctor was good Strange. Too. Yeah, that fight was also awesome, too. But I like how, on that part, it didn't cut at all. It just mm-hmm. showed them fighting. I mean, I know it was only, like, ten seconds, but yeah, I really did like that it didn't cut. Yeah. And I think a lot of fights shouldn't cut that much. I mean, no. it, just let us see what's happening. I mean, think of movies like freaking uh, John Wick. Like, those movies are good because you can actually see what's going on, and the choreography is so well done. Yeah, I mean, imagine if John Wick, it was dark all the time. There are some dark scenes in it, but it was like, cut, 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 cut. You wouldn't even know he was killing people. Yeah. I mean. You just think he's just kicking people around or shoving them a lot. Yeah. But this movie, like we said, it's not even an action movie, but it has more care put into it than I think some other action movies does. But one thing that just, just I love about this movie is that it, it balances that line between being like like nerd humor funny but actually genuinely funny like it's not overbearing it's like perfect you know yeah it's not all towards nerds uh-huh i love that part when it's like hey is he home and then he like dives out yes. the window <laughs> in the background uh yeah no he's he's gone yeah he just left yeah <laughs> i love that but it's it's and what's great is that even in all the in the midst of all these like character moments, there's actually some like just genuine like heartfelt stuff in there too. Yeah, like it's not it's not like all humor in your face. Uh huh. But like there's sometimes where it's like, listen, dude, you need to chill out. Uh huh. I will say that one thing that kind of I don't know, kind of bothered me a little bit, is like kind of that conflict in the middle of the movie where he just gets really pouty about having to like fight that did seem a little out of left field to me not gonna lie yeah but i mean it drives the plot you know and it helps him develop as a character so i can understand i I guess that's the point of like his character he's a very selfish person yeah that's fair but then he grows Uh uh-huh uh uh that's what the whole sponsored thing is about self 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 respect you get it if you watch the end of the movie or read the I'm I'm assuming it says that in the book. I'm really hoping. It well, does. we know for sure it's in the movie, so it's a reference to the end of the movie, which we recommend you go watch. Yes, this movie is great. It's on Netflix, not on Hulu, sadly. Yeah. Um, and apparently there are two endings to this movie, but we can dive into that later. But you know, Scott, he's played by Michael Sarah, which surprisingly, I have actually not seen that many or seen him in many movies. Yeah, I think he's like Juno fame. I think Juno. he was in Juno. I don't know what that is. You you know Ellen Page now Elliot Page. Yeah. Yeah, she was the in that. She was a pregnant high schooler, and I think he was the boyfriend that helped her through it. Oh. So. Yeah, no, I don't. It's a pretty influential this. film back in its day. Okay. Funny, funny thing about <laughs> uh, Michael Sarah. He doesn't age. Oh uh, yeah, but. I don't know how old he was when he did this movie, but there was this uh, back when I still had Twitter on my phone. Um, there was this, uh, this, uh, this, not this channel, this page that I followed. It was like, 
It was like horrible, like fan made movie posters. And the running joke in a lot of them would be that Michael Sarah was always cast as like some character in those. So every time I see him, I just think of those like cringy comic book movie posters that someone made or something like that. It's so funny. Like they'd have them in like an anime fan made poster or something. It was so funny. Michael Sarah just has one of those faces that Fun. you would not think like, oh man. You know, mm-hmm. movie like I don't want to say not movie star. He is like action star, like serious lead. Uh huh. But I mean, even though this movie is a comedy, like you know, there are some serious parts in it though. Oh like, yeah. I feel like he does a pretty good job playing them. He does. Uh, I will say though that like one thing I can tell. Sorry, I'm moving away from the mic. Um, one thing I can tell though is that Scott Pilgrim in this movie more has like kind of the. I don't want to say he's... Scott Pilgrim in the book is way more arrogant looking and sounding. More so than in this movie, surprisingly. And Michael Sarah kind of looks like... Or his version of Scott kind of seems more timid. But he still has a little bit of that arrogance. But it's more of like subtle douchebag type. Yeah, like in the book it's like, I'm a douchebag because I think I'm awesome. Yeah, In this movie it's like, well I'm a victim so I get to be a douchebag. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> And a funny thing also in the book <laughs> is that it takes forever to even learn about, like, like it's like, I think it's near, like, the end of the first, I just hit a lamp. It's like the end of, near the end of the first volume is where you finally, like, learn about his, like, old ex, which is funny. But in this one, he just alludes to it, like, in the first, like, what, like, three minutes? Yeah. Yeah. I think they mention it literally in the first scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well... That's what's funny to me in this movie, kinda, is like the whole time he's talking about like, oh, my breakup was so bad. Uh Uh-huh. My breakup with her was so bad. But then it's like, well, you broke this person's heart, this person's heart, this person's heart, this person's heart. And he's like, no, whatever. And it's like, oh, that that was, he keeps making excuses for himself. It's just like, yeah. So it's kind of like, okay. Mm -hmm. Also, the villains in this, in this movie are just so fun. Except, well, I don't know. There's one I didn't really care for. Mainly because they don't really get as much character, I don't th- I feel like. I think it was uh, the girl and, like, the two, like, uh, Daft, the Punk, the Daft Punk rip-off dudes. Yeah. I didn't really care for them because they just didn't really have a lot of character. But, like, Matthew Patel and, uh, oh, man, what was the other guy? The Chris... Chris Evans. Yeah, he's in this. By Chris the way. Evans. He is amazing in this movie. Yeah, he is. Awesome. He was born for the whole douchebag role, man. It is hilarious. Yeah, the villains are actually just really fun to watch. Some of them are. Well, one of them I can think of, uh, Gideon. He's actually like genuinely annoying. Oh no, my computer is running out of space. No, but, Lucas Lee. Lucas Lee. Thank you. But another thing that gives this movie, I feel like, a lot of just character is the whole just, like, punk rock vibe. You know, there are a bunch of losers just playing. They're like ultimate grunge rock. Yeah. They're just a bunch of losers playing in, in a house. and also, That's the thing I was going to mention. But, like, even though they're supposed to suck, I do kind of, like, genuinely enjoy the music they play in this yeah. movie. Just because it's different. Uh-huh. It just feels... I don't know, Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. It feels right in this world. It does. Because sometimes you can have the best movie ever, but if the music doesn't match, it just seems Um, kind of off. Like that one song out of Prince of Egypt. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Watch our Prince of Egypt to see what we're talking about. Yes, that's still probably... I think that one's my favorite video. Probably. Another thing, just genuinely, the, the song that Envy sings in it... Um... I actually, I don't know. It was actually kind of a vibe, not going to lie. I wish I could remember the name of it. I I don't know what the name of it is, but it was actually kind of catchy. Yeah. Also, Brandon Routh is in this. I forgot he was a villain, too. He was hilarious. Todd Ingram. Yes. That was (laughs) the power of veganism. Yeah, it makes him pretty much a god. He was basically going Super Saiyan on, on Scott. I love it. All right, but yeah, that part's like just really funny uh-huh. with Todd. Mm-hmm. Like he smacks the highlights out of her hair or a knob's hair. He's like, I can smack a girl. I'm a rock star. Yeah, I'm a rock star. 
It's like, well, one, uh, we don't want to advocate for hitting girls. So you're, yeah, and he's just, he's a really, like, honestly, the best three villains are uh, Matthew Patel Lucas. and then Lucas Lee and Todd, uh-huh. I think, right? Yeah, Todd Ingram. Just seeing Brandon Routh in a blonde wig cracked yeah. me up. It's like all spiked up. Uh huh. He literally looks like a guy out of a band from the 2000s. Mm hmm. That's the thing. He yeah. actually looked like really in place in that movie, which was kind of funny. <laughs> like Chris Evans' eyebrows. Uh huh. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Also, there's that one gag when like all the all the stunt doubles for Lucas are ganging up on Scott, and he's like, "It's like you you guys want anything?" And they all have his voice, and they're like, "No, we're good." And it's just like, "Oh, okay." Yeah. Honestly, you need to watch this movie to like understand what we're talking about with these like things. Mm-hmm. We're we're going into this hoping that you've watched, either this. seen it or you'll check it out later. It's honestly worth your time. Yeah, it's a it's a good movie. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's a like a really well shot movie. Uh huh. One of my favorite, or I think it was like your character. It's like <laughs> yeah, our favorite character out of this movie, I think, is Wallace, just because he has like the funniest lines, like. Out of everyone, he's just got that dry humor. Yeah, and, and I feel great. like okay, so this is gonna sound weird, but a lot of the time in other movies, when you have a gay character, it's like their gayness is what makes their character. Uh huh. But with Wallace, it's not that way. No, he's not the way he is because he's a gay person. Yeah, it's because of like he's snarky. Mm hmm. Yeah, and that's and that's and that's nice that they actually has character because a lot of times people just put stuff in there to, like like you said to pander. Yeah. But if you actually give the character, you know character then it's nice you know i actually feel something for the character yeah but he's definitely probably <laughs> the funniest person probably the funniest movie. person in the movie also uh one thing i want to touch on uh what's her name the the drummer kimberly kimberly yeah they don't really show what happened between those two in the book it was actually one of my favorite parts but it was actually like really sad so let me see if i can find it Scott, or you get a flashback in the book of him going to school, and so him and Kim get together and they like start a band, and and he and Scott's actually telling the truth when he said he had to like fight a guy to actually save her. I know he kind of plays that off as a joke in the movie, but he does actually fight a guy to uh, become her boyfriend. And they actually hit it off, and then he moves to Toronto. And they have to part ways. And that's what happened in the book. And I kind of wish they'd explain that a bit more, because it adds a lot more depth, I feel like. Because he didn't just totally dump her. Mm-hmm. But I can kind of see why they cut it out, you know, to save time. But then again, it wasn't that long in the book. But just something I feel like I wish... That was, you know, in there. Yeah. It was like the whole movie to lose that she hates him. Uh huh. But you never really know why. Uh huh. But, yeah. You just think she's the emo chick for the <clears throat> sake of being emo. Well, like, it does mention that they dated before. Uh huh. You know, but it doesn't tell, like, why they're, she's so upset with him about it. Yeah, well, he had to split up because he had to move. Yeah. He was in high school at the time, so he couldn't make that. But choice. I feel like the movie, like, makes it seem like he did something, like, really terrible to uh-huh. her. Uh huh. That's, that's what it feels like. I think that's what it alludes to. Yeah, but... Because why would he be sorry for something he couldn't control? Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. But, that, you know, well, that's one of the, like, few things. There's not really much else that... Well, I mean, I haven't read the book in a long time. Do you think there's anything else they could have added in that would have been better? I don't really think so. There was a fight that they cut out between Ramona and Knives, actually. Knives attacks ramona in like this like art museum i think no it was a library but she attacks her in this library and she has no idea who knives is at this point but they fight each other in that library and uh like i said i didn't read the next two volumes because of freaking barnes and noble but i mean they cut that out but really i can't think of anything that's like that was necessary that they cut out personally yeah I mean, I agree with you. I feel like a lot of this movie, uh, there was no part, like I said, that I was like, well, I could have cut that out. Mm-hmm. The whole stunt <laughs> double thing was weird, though, because I don't remember Lucas having any stunt doubles from the book. Yeah, they might have added that in to make it more. But it was funny, I will say. That part, I, I did enjoy it a lot. 
And it's funny because in the movie, <clears throat> he like beats the first guy pretty soundly. Uh-huh. So you're like, oh, okay, it's going to be easy for him. You know, and then it's like the very next one is uh, Lucas Lee, and he just beats the crap out of him. Uh huh. He like literally throws him like probably a whole football field into a castle. Uh huh. Let me say that while Nathan's looking this up. One of the great things about this movie is a lot of weird stuff happens and goofy stuff happens, Mm -hmm. but nobody treats it like it's weird. Like to them, it's just normal. Yeah. And I like it when movies are like that. (laughs) Mm hmm. And. Okay, here's here's something else I found. There's a scene between uh, Lucas and Scott where they actually just sit down and have a conversation. Because Lucas punches Scott in the face and, like, nearly K- KOs him. And he's like, let's take a break. And he's like, I have a cooler with some Gatorade and baby carrots and Ritz crackers. So they go and chat. And they just... And you get to learn a little bit more about Lucas... And then they just have this chat before they start talking again. And then, you know, leads the whole thing of him skating down the ramp and yeah. dying. Well, the movie kind of alludes to that. Uh-huh. He's like, hey, you want to go get a coffee or something? I can't remember what he says. You want to go uh-huh. get a bot? And then he, like, offers to help him up and then smacks him, you know? Uh-huh. So it kind of alludes to that part, I guess. But yeah. they, I guess they didn't want to have to take the time to have them talk and stuff. Like I said, you have to cut out a lot. Because if they had added any more, this would have been, like, a two-hour movie. I mean... I have to do this. It's just a staple of our channel. There's a lot of things they left out of Lord of the Rings, you know. Yeah. And some of them should have been kept in, in my opinion, Tom Bombadil. But <laughs> you have to cut things. You have to cut things. There mm-hmm. you go. Every one of our Lord of the Rings like watches. Ha- we're going to cut out half the coughs in this. <coughs> like that one. Yep. I'm keeping that one in. Okay, for just the, for that. Allude, for the like, sake of that comedic that. gag. Yes. All right. So, yeah, you have to make sacrifices at some point. But honestly, the result of this movie... It's pretty great. I feel like this movie, you could really tell the studio didn't really get involved. No. They didn't say, they were like, Edgar, do what you want. Uh Uh-huh. And they let him do it. It cracks me up when the, when uh, Lucas walks out of his trailer, they're playing the, uh, playing the freaking uh, Universal theme. Like, I don't know. That's just, I've never seen anyone really gag it like that before. (laughs) I don't know. Yeah. And he like pops his dick at the, Uh dun, 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 dun. That's great. But yeah, no, a lot, that's a, that's the thing a lot with movies, there's actually a lot of studio interference. Now, Edgar Wright was supposed to direct Ant-Man, and the reason he didn't is because he said Marvel wanted me to make a Marvel movie, and I wanted to make my movie. A me movie. Yeah. And they wouldn't allow that, so, that's sad, because I really wish we would have gotten a world where he, uh, directed well, it's kind of like with, you know, Guillermo del Tormo. Mm-hmm. He's supposed to direct the Hobbit movies, which would have been so awesome. I mean, I love Peter Jackson. Uh-huh. But, like, you know, he got called in, like, last second to come in and direct those. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, man. But, man, Guillermo, it would have been so awesome if he could have done it. But the studio just took so long. Mm-hmm. And they kept disagreeing with him on everything. And they also wanted a trilogy. And a trilogy. That was the main thing. Yeah. Yeah, studio differences can really suck. But then, if you get, sometimes you get a gym like this, and it really stands the test of time for a movie that is 11 years old now. This movie feels ageless in a way. Yeah, I agree. This movie, it really can fit into like almost any time period. Mm-hmm. No, oh, well, maybe well, I mean, not in as of now. Maybe not like before, like not before this movie came out. Yeah, from when this movie came out to now, it really just flows seamlessly to me. Mm-hmm. Plus, it takes place in Canada, so you know Canada. Maybe it's weird. What happens in Canada stays, stays in, in Canada. Canada. Yeah, we love. Maybe Canada. they just have constant boss battles up there. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's what's up with Canada. Maybe is that why milk's so expensive? I guess. I'm kidding. I don't even know if milk's expensive. I don't know. It's just a joke. I heard. You're a joke. Ouch. But you can fix that if you get yourself some (laughs) self-respect. Heck yeah, baby. I shoehorned in the sponsor again. Yeah, I also like at the end of the movie, this is alluding to this, so it's like the first time he goes against the main bad guy, it's like he earned the power of love. Yeah. And he still gets beat. (laughs) He dies. It's like, oh, um, uh uh-oh. Honestly, it is very refreshing to see a character like Scott actually have a redemption arc. Yeah. Because, like, selfish characters are, like, really unbearable sometimes. But that's the great thing. In this movie, you sympathize with Scott a lot. 
but he's also like you're also like dude why are the frick are you doing this he's like a real person yeah so just a quick side note here it's been a while since we uploaded one of these i think it's almost been two months i think it might be two months now but uh if there are ever breaks between videos like this it's because we're trying to find something that we actually can talk about because we tried with the social network to talk about a movie um we have a video recorded on detroit become human but we might need to comb through that because we're not sure if that's gonna turn out or not but this is the first movie where that we've watched that we actually feel like we have something to say. Yeah, and we literally just watched the movie. Mm-hmm. So, and I wanted I wanted us to talk about it while it's still in our minds, so that we you know can have a good discussion about it. And so far, I think we've done a pretty good job. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think this movie it's a really easy one to talk about, mm-hmm. just because there's a lot of interesting aspects to it. Yeah, but we want y'all to uh, f- for those of us that watches, we appreciate. Uh, you taking the time out of your day to view us we want to make stuff that we are proud of we want to make stuff that we know we like and so if we get to filming you know a video and it's not uh i guess within our vision or what we consider good then we want to try and improve that you know hang on you might be able to see it on patreon Whenever we open up Patreon, I feel like that we are way too early into this, actually. Yeah, that's going to be forever. Way. 55 subscribers, baby. We should at least hit, like, 100. Did no, you know? We'd have to hit, like, 1,000. Of the 10,000 people that watched the Planet of the Apes video, only, like, 50 of you are subscribed. So, <laughs> oh, like, gosh. if you press that... I'm kidding. Just... According to these st- the statistics, all my viewers, only, like, 10% of you are subscribed. Uh, yeah, actually, let me let me check that. Well, I'll let you guys in. I'm not going to tell you anything, really, but a little secret. We Holy have some... Crap. We just passed 10,000 views nice. on my channel. We just Woo! From this moment that we just looked, we have passed 10,000 views on Planet Apes. And by the way, we have like five other videos up that you can watch. Yeah, we have Prince of Egypt, Howl's Moving Castle. I really enjoyed the Howl's one a lot. Yeah, Treasure Planet. Treasure Planet and uh, Planet of the Apes. Ignore the one about the headphones. I might just private those and just get rid of them. And I also have the cyberpunk video. But we also have other projects coming up. Yes. We don't want to, do you want, I don't know, you want to tell them now or do you want to wait? No, let's, let's keep it a secret for now because we actually have to film the stuff. But we have a second channel-esque thing in mind. We're going to be talking about different stuff here on this channel, but for higher, uh, I guess higher quality, like, projects we have another channel that's in the works it's it's made but we just haven't put anything on there yet so yeah right now stuff is in development and it will take a while it's not like we can throw all this together in like a day but um honestly we're looking forward to working with it we have a whole whiteboard of stuff we can work with we wrote out stuff ideas when we were trying to find stuff to talk about and we have a lot of stuff that we could work with for a few months. So we have movies kind of lined up for different months out of the year. And so uh, really looking forward to that a lot. Yeah. But just letting you guys know if there's ever a gap between uploads, that's what's up. We're just trying to make quality content. Well, as much quality as we can recording with OBS because, and MS well, Paint. <laughs> let's be honest. We could we could probably do a video every week. Oh yeah, with really low quality. Uh huh. But that's not the type of channel we are here. No. Well, well it's not even my channel, but well. whatever. <laughs> I mean, we're not. I'm oh, sorry. Hot. I said quality. We're, sorry. We we don't believe in quantity over quality. We do this for fun. Yeah, but we want to do a good job too, though. And I get like really major creative burnout after i've worked on something so i kind of take it slow so i don't like you know and i'm here to make try to help him get through the burn quicker exactly we we go over a lot of ideas when i'm on the uh i'm the editing train so yeah that's what's been up with this but hopefully this will be a return to form and hopefully we can get back onto the train of putting out a video every month at least if that's you're what interested I'm in for. being an editor for us, we can't pay you. <laughs> we can't pay you much. 
I can give you a salary of like yeah, we can get you like dinner two, two, two bucks nights. an hour. Yeah, dinner two nights a week. Yeah, there we I'm go. Kidding. I don't know. If you live locally, we're not going to tell you our location though, because we don't want to dox ourselves. Yeah, exactly. Haha. Because so. we're not stupid. We're just partially stupid. We're not stupid. We're dumb. Exactly. Yeah. Huh. But yeah, so anything else that sticks out to you about Scott Pilgrim versus the world? I really do feel bad for Knives in the movie. Yeah. So Knives, okay, might as well tell you who she is. Mm-hmm. Knives is his first girlfriend before he meets the one he has to fight for. Scott Pilgrim's dating a high schooler. Yeah. Plus, well, she's a high schooler. She's and seven, he's not. She's 17 and he's 22. <laughs> <coughs> kind of an age gap <laughs> yeah let me clarify they're not i mean it's wrong no matter how you put it mm-hmm. you sh- if you're not i mean well if you're not 18 years old don't date people that are too old for you and if you're mm-hmm. older than 18 don't date people that are under 18 it's just weird yeah okay i don't even care if they're 17 and, and 364 think, days i think that's another thing a part of, about his character development they wrote it like that because they're not trying to be, like, weird or edgy or anything. They're showing it because of just how, like, much he lacks empathy, I think. And just, like, how much he I needs think to grow also, as a person. Yeah, I don't... And plus, I want to say, he didn't do anything with her. Like No, he didn't, he didn't. Literally, I don't even... They held hands and, like, maybe... I don't know. Like, that's about it, really. Yeah. Before she gets, like, really upset that he's dating somebody else. Mm-hmm. But, I like... They didn't treat it like it was a... Like... Like, I mean, they didn't, they could have made it way worse than it was. Oh, yeah. But they didn't. I guess I appreciate that they were smart enough to not make it weird, like, so weird. Mm hmm. So, I'm glad how they handled that. She seems like a sweet person, but she just got mixed up in, like, a bad situation. I mean, she does have an obsessive personality. That is very true. But I feel like he really just dated her because he wanted to fill the gap of not having dating somebody. He just wanted attention. Yeah. I think that's really all it was. Mm hmm. Also, we didn't really talk about Ramona either. She's, yeah, she's a pretty big part of the movie. Yeah. She's actually a really cool character. Yeah. She's, like, self-aware, but not to the point where it's, like, annoying. I was like, she's, like, the chill to Nav's, like, excitement. Yeah. Like, it's not bad to be excitable. Mm-hmm. And it's not bad to be chill. Mm-hmm. But, you know, everybody has preferences. Yeah. So. So, yeah, it's... Nice, like, balance between those two characters, and it just makes me happy that all of them just kind of reconciled in the end. Oh, yeah, and apparently there's two endings to this movie. Yeah, so you get to pick which ending you want. Well, not depending on if you watch the movie and it has that ending built into it. Well, I mean, if you see the other ending, you can decide you like that one better. You can form your own head canon. Yeah, exactly. Or read the book. I don't know how it is in the book. I don't know. I can't remember. I'll get back to y'all whenever I finish the book. I'll post it on Instagram along with everything else that I post on there. Go follow me, by the way. That's right. Go follow me. Handles are down in the description. Listen here, you little punk. You better go follow me. Okay, I'll find you. And I will uh, very aggressively play a bad guitar. He'll find you and make you you watch our Dawn of the Planet of the Apes review. You don't want to see that. Trust me. (laughs) Well, now that uh, aggressive Nate is gone, back to happy Nate. Yeah. Ah. But no, I think I've. I think we talked about pretty much. Yeah. All we're good. I mean, we hit the thirty-five minute mark. Nice. Well, nice. Listen here. <laughs> Buy our merch. No, I'm kidding. We don't. No, we don't. Have we don't merch. have any merch. That would be awesome. But it'd be awesome if we did. But one, I don't think we could afford to produce merch. No. So. Yeah. We can make like two shirts. Yeah. If you That's... hey guys, if you really want us to make you two shirts, just put your name down in the comments and we'll select two random people to try and make shirts for. How two about people it? People only comment on the video. Yeah, okay. You guys are war. <laughs> yeah, if you only two people comment, we'll attempt to make a shirt. That's right. You get a shirt for free. Yeah. Just send us your uh your your credit card information and the numbers on the back and uh your address and your uh, IP address, and we'll be all good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's all we want. We're not asking for We much. should do that for, like, some kind of milestone, though. If we reach, like, 100 subscribers, we'll be like, all right, we're giving away two shirts. All right, you listen listen to that, everybody. 100 subscribers. You subscribe now, you can get a free shirt, possibly, in the future. Heck, yeah. To only two people 
though, because <laughs> resources are limited. <laughs> That's why it's a lottery. Yeah, exactly. See? So, you guys get to hold us accountable to that. So, I don't know, maybe we'll, maybe we'll hit that at some point. But anyways, yeah, that is Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, the first movie that we've been able to talk about consistently. And uh, next on the list is... You'll have to wait and see. You'll have to wait and see because we're still deciding. But yeah, thank you all for tuning in, and hopefully we'll be back to our monthly schedule again. And uh, yeah, uh, this has been the Middle Mac Movie Cast. Uh, stay tuned for future projects down the line. They're still in the works, but and also if we when we do get around to making those other videos, make sure to remember there is a second channel. Yes, and we will promote the second channel. We'll probably put a has. link. Once it, like, in the, I don't know about these older videos, but we'll probably provide a link when that is actually up for yeah. you to click to go look at. So, yeah, we'll let you know when it we won't shove it down y'all's throats, but we will mention it. Might, we can might make a short video that's like, hey guys, the new channel's up, you know, whatever. Yeah, but anyways, yeah, thank you all for watching. I have been Nathan Middlebrooks, I've been Seth McCreary. I just hit the desk with my elbow, and Hoorah. we hope you have a good day. Peace, peace.